Um, I'm Pete Snyder, I'm the Vice President for Research. I wanna welcome everybody to Rhode Island, all of our guests. It's wonderful to have this event here today. And the organizers have done a phenomenal job. I think it's gonna be a really good day. Um, I'd like to show how uh, URI is addressing one of the most existential problems that we face uh, at this point in our lives. As previous speakers have already noted, plastics pollution is truly a glo growing global crisis due to a whole convergence of events, and we are at a pivotal moment, and we do need to seek solutions. As you are well aware, all studied ecosystems on this planet contain plastic pollution. It's in the water we drink, it's in the air that we're breathing. Even in remote areas, this is a photo of Bryce Luce, Professor Br Luce, with uh, several of his students in the Arctic, uh, uh, pulling ice cores uh, for the Northwest Passage Project, uh, finding uh, microplastics deep in submerged ice cores. There are more than 420 million metric tons of plastic that are produced annually worldwide. And that's as of 2020, and it's going to grow exponentially over time. 24 million metric tons of plastics are annually emitted into our oceans and fresh water. 85% of total microplastics in our waste are coming from microfibers, both synthetic and natu national, uh, natural, uh, shed from textiles. This problem has been made worse by the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of what we have learned, a lot of years of educating communities and passing uh, legislation at the local level was undone almost in one fell swoop by the COVID-19 pandemic and now we have to go back and uh, really recreate where we were a couple of years ago. So as has been pointed out, research is desperately needed. We don't understand a lot of the health impacts. We don't understand the health impacts uh, and the toxicology of more than 10,000 additives that are put in plastics, and we really need solutions quickly. So to address this, uh, URI has established a co-laboratory or a laboratory without walls involving nearly 50 faculty across the university, about eight of our nine uh, colleges, and many external partners internationally and nationally. The objectives are pretty simple. We want to convene. We want to identify sources of funding. We want to identify projects that are of great relevance and importance that are going to help drive policy decisions by our legislators. And we need to support these collaborations because everybody's used to working in, back, in, in silos. That's human nature. So the purpose of the collab is to cut across those silos and enhance the work that we can do as a university, knowing that we're one university in a small state and we have to partner in order to do this right and we have to partner in a very, very big way. So the CoLab has identified uh, five thrust areas that we are focused on because we cannot address every issue. It's just too much. The problem is too complex. So what are we good at and what are we gonna hone in on? Well, as you heard uh, from Carl, uh, in talking about his work with uh, Professor uh, Robel, uh, one project in the TMD department is to collaborate with an industry partner, uh, Kestrel Innovative Fibers, to explore conversion technologies that use waste streams of plastic collected from the oceans and waterways to make viable filaments and products. That's one. Associate Dean for Research Vinka Craver in the College of Engineering, who's also the director of the Plastics Collab, uh, we'll probably be talking to you about leveraging the life cycle analysis in the classroom and research to determine economic and environmental viability for materials and processes. And that team and its partners are actively pursuing both private and public opportunities. You may hear about more of this later. In the impacts and behaviors thrust areas, researchers across the university and disciplines are studying how shellfish, seaweed, insects, human cells, microzooplankton, and a variety of other living organisms interact with microplastics and microfibers pollution. This knowledge will support decisions 
further up the pipeline on how and what to do to remedi remediate those processes and to protect human health and the integrity of our food chain. And this work is happening at a very critical moment. Uh, the UN uh, is kicking off a uh, treaty negotiation process that will probably run over the next two years on this topic, and this is a chance to in, in, inform that process with good science. We are creating new tools, uh, both uh, bringing them in, purchasing them, and developing them ourselves to improve our analytical capabilities and measurement. And you'll hear about solutions. Uh, Professor Saray Urgin in the College of Business is hoping to work with the textile industry to determine their concerns and perspectives for adopting new processes and possible circular economy benefits for the industry. You've already heard a little bit of this from Carl. Jason Jacks in the uh, college in the Harrington School of Communications and Arts and Sciences with his students are dividing, devising new multimedia approaches to educate the public to allow for better decision making. So we're in this for the long game. We are right now planning a conference in the spring of 2023, date to be determined, probably later today. And the goal in partnership with the Embassy of France and the Global Council for Science and the Environment is to convene an international conference. It will be the third in a series. We're gonna hold it here at URI in order to, again, help to inform with good science the public policy initiatives that are being debated uh, at the UN over the next two year period. Finally, we're trying to uh, keep everybody informed. Uh, as I said, the CoLab involves nearly 50 faculty and many, many external partners. And we launched a new website, plastics.uri.edu, which you can go to any time. Uh, we are trying to keep it fresh and up to date. And uh, we want to make sure that everybody in the community is aware of URI's continuing and abiding commitment to this very critical issue that we're facing as a planet. Thank you.